Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. Time for your weekly K-State headlines. And this week, it's going to be all about the Wildcats and the Wildcats because we are prepping for a big-time showdown on Friday, not Saturday, Friday night for K-State in Arizona, 7 o'clock on Fox, part of Fox's new Friday night package that Basically, they're having to do for a couple things. One, they really like money, and it's good money for them. You get good exposure in that window. College football, when other teams are not playing college football, gets a lot of people to tune in. And in addition to that, they now have the rights to leagues that are massive, and they have a finite amount of TV windows that they can actually get these teams to play into. I mean, you think in Fox's circumstance, if they want the game – They either have Fox or FS1, so they have two channels that they can divvy it up to, and then they have the 11 o'clock, the 2.30, then go again around 6 or 7, and then if you do 6, you can maybe squeeze in a fourth. So at the most, Fox and FS1 combined could have eight TV slots throughout the day, but then as we've talked about, Drew, Fox has to factor in that for the next month and a half, they've still got baseball going on and working around another one of their big properties. So that will screw with it. Makes a lot of sense for them to do this, uh, to try and bring exposure to their two big properties in the sports world outside of the NFL, which is the Big Ten and Big 12. So K-State and Arizona, they get to kind of be the first guinea pigs of the season with this. There will only be one other Big 12 game on this Friday night package, and it's Utah and UCF on Black Friday, which is a totally different thing. Like, those Black Friday games, there are a ton of them throughout college football. It's a little different uh, than the normal set of circumstances. So we'll get to all that and all the headlines surrounding the Friday night game. But first, a reminder that you can join your Wildcats in Ireland as they kick off the 2025 football season against Iowa State in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Game tickets can be secured now through a travel or hospitality package. All-inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, an exclusive K-State welcome experience, and more. Game day hospitality packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. Don't miss out on the trip of a lifetime. Book your package now at cats2ireland.com. That's cats, the number two. Ireland.com. And with that out of the way, we can get into the headlines for K State and Arizona. You see the ranked numbers next to those teams, which is the best place to start, Drew, because for the first time in 10 years, K State will be hosting a top 20 matchup at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. The last time that it ended up taking place, it involved K State and Auburn on a weeknight back in 2014. Uh, so w- w- I'll start by asking, what do you find the impact of this game to be for K State? Because standalone Friday, but also big time matchup with a ranked opponent that has a lot of good national notoriety because they had a good season last year. And they've got two studs and Noah Fafita and Tedaroa McMillan. Yeah, I, I think that it, it's a big time matchup and a big time spot for K State. I I saw somebody that. I've kind of seen on TikTok that's a kind of a college football analyst that made a list this week of like top games uh, for this weekend. And he had Wisconsin and Alabama number one. And that just kind of felt like he was trying way too hard. This is the biggest game of the weekend. It's the only game of ranked teams the entire weekend. So you kind of think about it as yes, Casey gets the same, the standalone spot, but does the standalone spot, kind of take away that you could have had college game day in Manhattan, probably, uh, if you look at kind of the, the rest of the schedule. Uh, but the the stat of no top 20 matchups since 2014, you know, we talked about it on the way uh, back from New Orleans, that that didn't really sound right. And then, like, we went back and looked, and it, it was, uh, because Oklahoma State, uh, the Oklahoma State game, K-State was a team not in the top 20, and then uh, Texas wasn't in the top 20 in 2022. So you kind of think about that, and it, it kind of puts things into perspective of how big this game is, and, and I think how amped that uh, the whole crowd will be. I, I'm expecting probably it, – it's hard in this year because there's it's such a loaded year of home games, but I, I anticipate that this crowd will probably be second or third behind KU and then Oklahoma State, kind of depending on how things shape up there. 
but I, I think that it's a fun game, fun matchup. You really have to ask yourself, though, does Casey have to play on a weeknight now to have a top 20 matchup at home? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's uh, maybe it just becomes a reoccurring thing. Uh, w- we talked about this uh, as we were kind of getting stuff ready and, and prepping for Powercat Game Day. Do you know the last game on a weeknight that was a regular season game that K-State won? Because obviously there are bowl games. You know, they, they've beaten LSU on a weeknight. Uh, they've beaten Texas A&M on a weeknight. But the last regular season weeknight victory for K-State. Oh, boy. Uh, I mean, I you, can, yeah, we, you can work through the games because that might be enjoyable for people to think of. But obviously, like... They played Texas 2021 Black Friday. That was not enjoyable. That was not enjoyable. Uh, well, it got Courtney Messingham fired, so it depends <laughs> on who you are. But in a sick way, it was probably enjoyable. Uh, and then you, you go back and you think through some of the others. Um, I don't. There wasn't one Climbers first year. Well, obviously Oklahoma State last year. That was a. That uh, also wasn't enjoyable. Yeah, that was a Friday night, not very fun situation. Um, uh, I'm gonna say, ooh. They had 2015. They lost the. It was 15 or 16. They lost the Baylor, Baylor on a Thursday. Yeah, I I don't think that I know this answer because then I'm thinking back and like Nebraska on a Thursday was also not enjoyable. North so Dakota, North Dakota State was on a Friday that wasn't <laughs> enjoyable. Exactly. I, I mean, think of that. That North Dakota State game was 11 years ago, and it's not like K State is playing or the Big 12 even is playing these games constantly or whatever but it's crazy to think that you go back 11 years and that still isn't the right answer you got to go back to i believe i'm correct on this but you were in the same you're in the ballpark with bringing up nebraska in 2010 because one week later they went on the road and beat ku 59 to 7 on a thursday as well so they played back-to-back thursday games in 2010 and uh, that is the last time k-state won a game not played on a Saturday during the regular season. That yeah, just means that K-State is due. I guess so. And uh, I, I don't know where you would have to go prior to two, the, that 2010 game if you were looking for uh, another example of it, but that might be something that I'll put a little bit more digging into uh, before D.Y. and I uh, get fired up and ready to go for uh, our full preview and just going through the list of all the weeknight games. Uh, for some strange reason, and I I don't even know like if this is real or if there's something screwed up with the system, but K State's road game at Louisville in 2008 is listed as being played on a Wednesday. Is that is that right? Did they really play that game on a Wednesday? There's no way. But like 2008, they're really scratching like uh, the the back of my brain where it goes. I mean, I yeah, I, I don't know. It's I, it, I think it would make sense. I don't know why. Every everywhere says that it was played on a Wednesday. So yeah, that's for, crazy. Yeah, I, you, I don't know what the that, like, backstory is there, but yeah, imagine saying that like now, like a non Mac team, like yeah, you're just gonna play on a Wednesday night. Deal with it. Yeah, and that was and it, you know you would think oh maybe it was like week one and it was something. No, that was that was week three. Uh, K State had already blown out North Texas and Montana State, and then they were uh, going on the road to do that. So very strange and uh, interesting to see K State's history with these games. So we mentioned that this is the first top twenty matchup in Bill Snyder Family Stadium since the Auburn game in 2014. I think a lot of people have fond memories of that game, despite the way that it ultimately ended, because of the way it was kind of built up and the way everybody treated that game. And then just, I mean, you think back to, to how that played out, like a lot of really good players, and those were two really good football teams playing in it. Um, and I think if you go and look, that still ends up being one of the top attendance games in K-State football history. Um, it's number 11 uh, in terms of largest crowds at Bill Snyder Family Stadium, at just over 53,000, uh, 53,046 to be exact for anybody curious. So, uh, what are your expectations of how this game with Arizona will be remembered versus that Auburn game? And because I think that Auburn game is so ingrained into K-State lore now, because the crowd was awesome, 
uh, because of the players that K-State had in that game. And, you know, unfortunately, Tyler Lockett, like the one bad play that you could think of in his career, you can point out in that game. Taking the win or the loss out of it, do you think the K-State-Arizona game on this Friday will be remembered better or lesser than the game against Auburn? Because really two semi-similar set of circumstances, I would say. Um, that Auburn yeah. team was ranked higher, so y- you could go that route and everything. Um, and that K-State team ended up getting the last week of the regular season uh, a win away from tying for the Big 12 title. And obviously this team has Big 12 title aspirations. But where do you think that the Arizona game will compare to that game with Auburn? Which, the, again, the, la- the little difference there is going to be K-State was the number 20 team in that game with Auburn. Auburn was number five in the country when they came to Manhattan. I'm going to go slightly less. I mean, th- that Auburn game is one of like the, the pivotal childhood games that I really remember uh, going in. Just the atmosphere there was pretty electric. The reason that I think that I would have Auburn a little bit higher is that Auburn was coming off of two pretty good seasons right in a row. And I think that you kind of had that brand value of an SEC team coming to Manhattan where like no disrespect to Arizona, but like if this was in Arizona, Casey, like a basketball game, like, like we'll get in during the winter. I think that we'd see probably a little bit more animosity. Like Arizona football it is good, but Auburn was coming off of winning a, a national title. I, I believe it was the the year prior or two years prior. Yeah, they had just they had just come off of it. Uh, it would have been well, maybe it would have been even the yeah, it would have been eh, a little more than that, like three ish years ago. Although that would have been the season. Did they play for the national championship that year or the year prior? Yeah, they, that, I, that was the first year of the playoff, I guess. So it was the year prior they had played for the national title where they lost to Florida State. So, yeah, so so you get that. And, and like Arizona had a good year last year. Arizona was going to be good this year. But I think that you come off of a team that had won the national title uh, in the same like four or five year stretch, then played for another one coming to Manhattan probably means a little bit more than Arizona right now. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, uh, Drew, we, we could keep talking about this, but this is about the headlines. And when we're talking about, is this a big deal or not? We have breaking news as we are in the middle of recording this. Uh, I don't know how excited people are. I know that I am very excited about this. The K-State men's basketball team has just unveiled new uniforms for the upcoming season, it would appear. And while they are not cat scratch-esque, they are in the ballpark of being there. Uh, have you have you seen the, the video that, that K State has just put out, and I think that was bad English there. But I'm I'm frazzled because I've got an annoying daughter, as annoying as Kirk Herbstreit's dog showing up in the middle of everything right now. She's trying to make this about herself, and I'm you know frantically trying to celebrate the death of those horrendous primary uniforms K State's had the last handful of years. So have you seen the new unis? Yeah, th- those are those are very clean, very fresh. Uh, yes. I really like I really like uh, the stitching on the sides just the the clean k state across the front uh but this is this is uh you get the behind the scenes like you can really go back and figure out where where we recorded this because the video dropped probably like two minutes ago and we're talking about it yeah i mean i just it came across i was looking for something else and all of a sudden uh i see this i mean it just it literally just happened but uh, a couple of notes here for everybody number one they fixed the ugly numbers so that's gone, as you can see, uh, a better look right there. More of just that standard block font. A lot of the striping is gone. So, you know, depending on how some people feel, I know that there's kind of a war that goes on with that now uh, and everything. The little spot on the waistband is just going to have the script Wildcats that will be a nice touch. Uh, and then, yes, as mentioned, it's not a cat scratch, but uh, it is a little pattern there that is reminiscent of you know a power cat or a wild cat and uh whatever you're you're looking for there and i have a sneaking suspicion that i know exactly where that comes from without knowing what you know i'm sure we're going to get some 
bigger unveil or at least uh, explainer of what is going on there. But uh, as K-State is kind of used in other various things, they take that from the old cat head logo and they've used it in some of their like social media and graphic branding over the last handful of years. Um, so I, I like the simplicity of these uniforms and I like that they did something unique down the side of, uh, of the Jersey and I'm going to like it. I'm going to choose to enjoy it. Now I will say, this is not me saying this, but I can already see some other people out there not attached to K-State saying that maybe it looks like cow print on the side of the uniforms. Again, not me saying that. I like what they did there. I I, I, I respect what they are doing, but I, I, I think it could happen. So I'm just oh, see what I was gonna say is that you can tell that it's a good uniform because you have people on the opposite ends of the spectrum. I see like eight tweets in a row saying, Wow, these are sick, and then like three that are like, What is that? So <laughs> I think I think that's how you can really tell that it's probably a good uniform because the, I think that the best ones personally for me are the ones that everybody either loves or hates. Yeah, no, I, I, I would agree with that. I, I think that, uh, you look there, it's tough to make uniforms these days, especially as, uh, Nike really doesn't give, uh, a rat's booty about, uh, what they do for a lot of schools, but, I appreciate them. I like what they did here. Uh, and I think they're, they're going to look clean on the court. They are 3,000 times better than their traditional homes in a ways that they had. And I think yeah. that's all that you really need. Yeah. So, uh, all right. That, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably going to consume my night now is fighting with people. <laughs> uh on wh what what they see and what they don't see but yeah they've they have fixed those up they are no longer the ugly abomination that they once were and uh, at the end of the day as long as you're a cat fan and you enjoy them that's all that matters if you're somebody else uh we don't really care they're not for you so just like the lavenders like if people can complain about them but they're really not for you uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, any other thoughts on K State Arizona? Uh, if as we get back to that to close us out, I'm just too distracted by new basketball <laughs> uniforms becoming a thing. How about that? Uh, I'm gonna say the the one thing that I'm probably looking forward to the most and really seeing how it plays out is something that I kind of discovered is, is that Arizona can be a little turnover prone and turnover happy. Uh, so K-State really needs to try and take advantage of that. In 11 of Noah Fafita's starts in his career, he's thrown an interception in at least eight of them, at least one interception in eight of them. So if K-State can really take advantage of that and win the turnover battle. And the other thing that I would say, I don't know if it would even qualify as a headline, they have to be able to pass in this game because Arizona is like 91st in pass success rate in the country given up. So if you can pass the ball in this game, you'll probably be able to win. Yeah, no, that's true. And I I, I think it'll be kind of fascinating to see how the K-State defense plays in this game, not from a standpoint of they pretty much sucked for a majority of the game against Tulane, but from the turnover aspect that you talked about, that was like one of the biggest positives from the game on Saturday, which is why it's unfortunate that they played so bad in other areas, is we've harped so many times over the last few years they weren't able to get these turnovers in these spots. They were able to win the turnover battle 2 nothing on Saturday. It should have been 3 nothing if you know we're really talking about it. Um, and so that is significant. So can they carry that part over? That'll be fascinating to see. It'll be a key against Arizona. So a good note there on uh, the much feared Noah Fafita, but there is a way to make him look human. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Go enjoy the rest of the night thinking about K-State wearing new basketball uniforms that aren't ugly. Uh, like the the last set was. Apologies to whoever designed them. I know Scott Wildcat for years kept telling me, well, they actually mean this, they mean that. I don't care what they mean. If they're ugly, they're ugly. Just kind of how it works out, you know? Uh, so these are not ugly. They're a little simple, yes, but we know that everything's kind of moved back in the uh, simplicity direction. All right, uh, final question on the uniforms, Drew. Who has the better primary uniforms now, the men or the women? Uh, ooh. I'll say the men. I, I it. I think it's the newness of it. 
it is really kind of the, the the determining factor there. Yeah. So recency bias, as we as we suspected, but there they are in all their glory. David Gasson, Doug McDaniel, rocking the new uh, stripes along the side. Uh, I, I believe, I believe they are taking that. Uh, from like the cocaine Willie pattern that everybody has uh, become familiar with. So that will do it for us here. And uh, we'll be back again tomorrow. D.Y. and I will have a little recruiting show talking basketball and then the preview coming your way as well. Still a lot to get to in what turns out to be a short week with K-State and Arizona kicking off on Friday night. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online. Back again tomorrow with more on the K.